Hey guys, my name is Willa and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the college success tips that nobody talks about. I feel like when I always used to watch these videos, I would see people being like, join a study group, go to like office hours with your professor. And obviously that stuff is like helpful, but I feel like that stuff is kind of like the stuff that everybody tells you to do. And I feel like it's not that realistic all the time. I think that in my entire college like life, I probably went to office hours like one time because I had to. That's not always the most realistic for a lot of us. So I just wanted to make a video about my tips and tricks that are like untalked about that I did during college to graduate magna cum laude. If you don't know what magna cum laude is, it means that your GPA is between a 3.75 and a 3.9. So honestly, I can kind of say that I had a successful college like academia career while also maintaining a balanced social life, caring about myself and like working on self-care, having a relationship and just like having a good balance in my life. So my first tip, I think that this tip is kind of talked about a lot in these videos, but it's dress for success. I feel like when I say dress for success, I don't mean that you have to look like super like dressed up in like a blouse and like dress pants for class. I just don't think that's very realistic. But I do think that when you look more put together, other people in the class are going to take note of you. And if you ever have like a group project or a group assignment, more people are going to want to partner with you because you look like you have your life together. This is kind of a hack to like look smarter than you really are because if you look put together and you're wearing like a nice like matching outfit and your hair is like brushed, like you just look like you didn't just roll out of bed and go to class, people are going to want to pair with you because they're going to be like, oh, this girl looks like she studies, this girl looks like blah, blah, blah. And you might not do that, but fake it till you make it, you know what I mean? My second tip is to just start assignments as soon as they're assigned. This is not that realistic, I guess, if if you think I mean like start it and like do a ton as soon as it's assigned. Sometimes that's not like able to, we're not able to do that. But what I mean is like, if your teacher talks about, oh, there's gonna be this paper due in like two months and it's gonna be about a topic of your choice or like this specific topic, go home, look on Google Scholar or whatever like academia website that your like school library provides that like gives you sources and look for like 10 sources that you think could be related to that paper. If it's like an easier homework assignment, you can just like answer question number one as soon as you're assigned it or something like that. Specifically for papers and like projects, I think that getting the sources or just getting like the hard part done quickly it helps that for later on, like when you go back, you're like, oh, I already found these sources. Now I can like go through them and actually decide which five or which seven I want to use in my paper or which ones I want to use for my presentation. This saved me a lot of time in college and also it helped me from procrastinating. If you didn't start a paper and like you've had months to do it and it's like two weeks until it's due and now you're like, oh my gosh, I have to look for sources. I have to like format it. I have to make sure it's like APA or MLA format. I have to like make a bibliography. If you already got your sources and like, figure out which sources you want to use in your brain like when you do that week one of the assignment throughout the entire like rest until it's actually due you're gonna kind of have like an i like an idea of what you're gonna talk about when you go to sit down and write it first of all you already have your sources you can already do your bibliography ahead of time if you want to all you have to do is like write the paragraphs and like the actual meat and potatoes of the paper but you already got the gravy done so you're good to go. I do this with little mini assignments too. Just start a little bit and it will feel like less of a task when you go back to like actually complete the entire assignment. My third piece of advice is try to link class concepts into like your day-to-day -day conversations. This is not that easy, okay? I was a psych major for, so for me, this was kind of easy because if my friends were asking for advice, I could be like, oh, well, I learned in class that blah, blah, blah. Like it's a lot different when you're a psych major. If you're a chemistry major, and you can't really bring stuff up casually in conversation, my advice for you is call your parents or like call your friend that doesn't go to your school or like set up something with your roommates where you guys like talk about school like once a week. And it can just simply be like you guys meet up and you're like, oh, what's the most interesting thing we all learned this week? I think this is a great idea. Cause you know how parents are always like, what did you do in school this week? Now you can tell them. And I just think that like, if you explain a concept to somebody who doesn't know that much about it, you're reteaching it to yourself. 
but you're also feeling like more smart because they're probably gonna be like, oh, that you're so smart, like that's so interesting. And that's like a confidence boost and helps establishing your self-concept that, yeah, you know, I am pretty smart. Like, wow, I, I got this in the bag. I would always bring up subjects like in class that we were learning that I kind of didn't understand. And that's probably confusing to you, but if I tried to explain it to like my boyfriend who doesn't know a lot, a lot about psychology or like my parents who don't know a lot about psychology, trying to explain it to them helps me like figure out ideas in my head about it that might not have been like obvious when I was hearing somebody else lecture about it. I think it can be really helpful in solidifying your knowledge about a certain topic. Number four is sit in front in class. I think a lot of people talk about this. I'm just gonna give you like my honest opinion on it. I still went on my phone when I sat in front. Like everyone's like sit in front, you won't go on your phone, you won't, on you won't online shop. I did all those things, but I think sitting in front is beneficial because first of all, it can't hurt you. So if something can't hurt you and can probably help you, why are you not doing it? Like, yeah, you might think, oh, but people are gonna think I'm a Karen. People are gonna think I'm like brown noser. You're not. Also, if those people are saying that about you, they're probably the people who are gonna like come to you and ask for study guide information or like help on assignment. So don't care what they think. Sitting in front also makes your teacher recognize your face. This is obviously for online stuff, but for Zoom, if you're a Zoom student, my like, equivalent of this is turning your camera on i know but i would turn my camera on in classes that like were harder for me because your teacher sees your face and then if you go to their office hours or you go up after class or whatever and you ask them a question they're gonna know in their head like oh that person sits in front like they actually care about this because that's the reputation of like people who sit in front they care and they're paying attention promise you can still go on your phone you can still online shop i still did that but your likelihood of doing those things are like lower because you might be embarrassed for people behind you to see like you on amazon looking at like reusable straws. I didn't care what people thought and you shouldn't care either. My next tip is have like like-minded roommates or habit people, roommates who have similar habits than you. This is like very important because I feel like you start to act like the people that you surround yourself with. Even if you're not friends with your roommates, I feel like their habits sometimes will wear off on you. For example, like if you are rooming with people who don't care a lot about school and like to party a lot, which like that's great for them, like period, that's awesome. But if that's not like a goal that you're having for yourself and you wanna become more studious, then you should probably look for people who have more of that lifestyle because they're not gonna be going out every night. Or even if they are, they're gonna have like been, been studying from five until nine when the pre was. Like you're going to be more inspired and encouraged to do what they're doing, which is what you're wanting to do or what you're already doing and you're seeing is working. So that's a big tip. I think it works really great. I've definitely noticed differences in my own academic performance based on the roommates I was living with. There were some semesters where I did way better than others and there were some semesters where I didn't. And I don't think it's 100% my roommate's fault, but I do think that you are impacted by the people you surround yourself by. And that's just it. Kind of going off of that, my seventh tip is to make friends with people in class that are like smart, less smart kids. Again, if you're sitting in front already, Go, turn around to the people around you and make friends with them. This is gonna help you because like you can get study guide information from them. You can ask them about assignment questions. People say this advice a lot, but I also just think like if you make friends with them, it kind of goes with the roommate thing and you start hanging out after outside of school, like you're gonna hang out with them to study while engaging in like a social thing by like seeing a friend and hanging out with them. I don't really like studying with people on the same subject, but I think making friends who were like smart, if they had homework and I had homework, like going to a coffee shop or like going to their apartment or whatever and like doing work next to each other and like having conversation in between stuff, that really worked for me. And it's a social setting, but you're also doing work. You're killing two birds with one stone, it's great. But the next tip I have is to make an all-inclusive study guide like a couple days before the exam. Now, I am so against cramming, like I was saying, I do assignments like before they're due or start them before they're due. But this tip has helped me a lot and I still do this to this day with like a certification I'm trying to get for a job that I wanna have. But basically like before you're about to have the assignment or the assessment, not assignment, assessment or like exam, the Friday before you are going to go somewhere. You're gonna go like in your room, you're gonna go to the library, you're gonna go to Starbucks, wherever it is that you like to go work. And you're gonna look at every single note you have from that section that the exam's gonna be on and you are going to turn that into one study guide. You are going to rewrite the stuff. If you like to write, you can write. I like to type because like it's easier because you can just copy paste, whatever you like to do. But you are going to make one like 60 page study guide of everything you've learned from that chapter. 
or that like section of the class. The reason I do this is because while you're going over stuff, it's starting to make it more like concepts instead of just facts you learn in chapter one, facts you learn in chapter four. It's starting to make it like the big picture, and especially in college, like you're learning this stuff to eventually use it in your future. You need to understand X, Y, Z to get to like ABC, one, two, three. Okay guys, so that was all my tips. I have a ton more. I'm just kind of like cut some out in this video because I think I talked about them a little bit when I was talking about other tips. But if you guys want a part two to this, I could definitely do more tips. I definitely have more stuff up my sleeve. So let me know and comment them down below. Make sure you subscribe and comment any other videos that you'd want me to do. And do great in college. You're gonna do amazing. You're gonna be successful. Just keep telling yourself like, I'm great, I'm smart, I got this in the bag. And you got this in the bag. I believe in you. Bye.